это учило старик у нас в ответ на бескорыстно. Гармония и шум. Да, и превращает да. его для нас в источник высокого наслаждения да, да. и объединяет. И потрясает. Ведь все в конечном счете имеет свой смысл. Для чего все это нужно? И главное, и кому? И причину. Hello and welcome to a very brief overview on my suprematism work and really what that's all about and getting a little bit underneath of how I do it as well as a little bit of background on suprematism itself and how I bring that into photography. So as the slide says, suprematism, transitional photography through geometric abstraction and approaching zero degrees. For the suprematists, this was the part where the medium could no longer go without ceasing to be art. Still just a small part of what it was all about, but a part of also of my photography and taking it to a point where you question the photography itself. Along with Malevich's ethos, my own photography and bringing it into suprematism really align with some of his quotes here. And certainly it's about bringing the individual forms within pictures to life in their own way and for them to have their own individual existence. Also for me, it's certainly breaking down barriers and rules and new thinking, just thinking very, very differently about the images we take. Interestingly, this thought of literal representation and zero creativity, um, I felt very much in that place myself uh, before I went into my fellowship. I had been mentored outside of the Royal Photographic Society and I really felt I was really copying stuff that I'd done before and I was listening to mentors and really not producing my own creativity and I wanted to get away from that. When Milajevic talks about skillful reproduction and the art of creating and the art of copying and that there is this great difference, I also felt that was a case. Certainly I think most photographers feel that so many pictures that we've shot, we've, we've seen them all before and they've been taken God knows how many times and it is more or less skillful reproduction. Yes, we are a craft and we have to make use of the camera and think about things, but so often we see views and other things that we may produce in the studio and think, well, how do we do this differently? And yeah, maybe it's been done before. And trying to find something new is so, so difficult. And I certainly appreciate that as a photographer. And I think really suprematism opened up this whole new area. Suddenly I was creating something new from my photographic work importantly this new was something created from me so once I'd taken the picture and then destroyed the actual picture itself and abstracted the elements that I wanted I could start and create something brand new much in the way that the suprematists did additionally I really love this quote where it's talking about color and texture in painting are the ends to themselves and that they are really the essence of it when we look at photography all of these elements that come into play, colour, shape, line, texture, they themselves are the essence of a photograph. And my view on bringing suprematism within photography really is about taking all of this good stuff, saying yes, that you know these things are there and the subject is important to us as photographers, but really deep down, our photographs are full of these wonderful colours and textures and lines and shapes and they themselves can be an end to themselves, very much like what Milajevic was saying here. So let's have a look at some of the work by the man himself. The two upper left really um, is showing like the influence and how he was coming away from some of the influences of Italian futurism. You see that movement coming through there and also cubism and that transference of geometry starting to come into play. And then we see from the three upper right and, and the bottom three, some of his what was called dynamic suprematism, which is really where I was coming from with my fellowship panel. There are plenty of other suprematist artists to choose from, so just a small splattering here of Rochenko, Tatlin, Popova, Maholi Naj. And although Kandinsky was working in abstract before this, he was certainly influenced by the work of the suprematists as well, with much more geometric work starting to come into play. Interestingly, some of these artists did move into photography, the likes of Rochenko and Maholi Naj. It's interesting to see their work and how they're using line, shape, as well as form and texture, and their own influence on photography itself. Going on to my own work, uh, first of all, as a fellowship, I was looking for a unique style, and really that's very important for fellowship. And really, I don't think you'll find anything anywhere near close to this, really, in the way of like um, anything similar. And hopefully you'll agree that 
this style of photography certainly does align itself extremely closely to Malevich's dynamic suprematism. All of my pictures are derived from a single image and that image is actually totally destroyed. All I really want to keep is the existing geometry that's in there, whether it's shapes or lines. That's what needs to come forward. And anything else, just like Malevich, is really surplus to the, the final composition. And we want to just keep the essence of the original image in the form of its geometry. This existing geometry, it's all about bringing that into the suprematist framework, allowing that geometry that was there in the original image to actually have its own freedom. Now all of this brings forward the purest of the elements that was there. That comes down to colour, shape, texture, tone, form, which is this three-dimensional aspect of the final composition. And making use of line and space is, is very, very important. For me, it was about using white space as Malevich did. Now once these all come together, it is a case of taking the whole thing and exploring movement, balance, and harmony, although I'm happy to look at Discord to invoke movement. Um, but really this is, you know, the final stage of bringing it all together, producing a, an image that really reflects the dynamic suprematism of Malevich's work. Now this moves us quite away from the original photograph and you could say that, you know, we're looking at losing the barricades of traditional photography and now we're in pure abstraction, again, very much aligned to how Malevich was feeling with his general views of art at the time. Now this takes me into a totally new area for photography. It provides a creative freedom, which is really something you don't get in photography. So with the original creation of the image and then the destruction, we're back to recreation with the essence of the original photograph, but producing something in abstract form in the style of the suprematists. This is now where creativity from within, as Malevich called it, starts to happen and you bring together a brand new piece of abstract art. So let's take a look at my panel and it's worth just pausing the video here and having a read of my statement of intent. Normally you'd get 150 words for panels with a fellowship, but I entered into conceptual and contemporary as the genre and this allowed 300 words and I really wanted to get the whole message and the whole ethos across within this statement of intent for what ended up being an extremely unusual panel. So do have a read through this, you might want to read it two or three times as well. This was my hanging plan and I ended up using all that was available, so eight meters. I wanted to have four sections all set out in crosses that actually occupied a, an area of four squares. And really it was about taking the viewers to four individual areas, so much like when you're walking around a gallery. So I just didn't want to show one panel, but I really wanted it to be a journey across this panel and then taking each section as you got to it, but still have the impact of a whole panel of the 20 images. So here's the panel, do enjoy it if you want to rewind back and if you want to take another look at it, and then I'll talk about my work some more.
Just picking up on a few things now, some of which has been mentioned before, but hopefully you will agree with all of this after seeing the body of work. And yes, it is highly geometric, but it is using existing geometry. It's not just pieces that have been cut out. And that's really important for me in that it is photographically derived, all of this geometry, and it is a case of making new compositions, like I said before, in the style of the suprematists. I'm sure you will agree it's very non-objective. If you can actually get to grips with what it came from, then I think I've probably failed. And that's a, a really important aspect of all of this, that um, it is completely non-objective, again, aligned with the suprematists' work themselves. Alongside dynamic suprematism, it is all about using colour against white space. However, I do play around with white on white. That's something that Malevich got into as well. So it's, it's quite an interesting challenge to play with that at times. And there are a couple of pieces that um, really are derived mostly from white or, or white to greys and very little colour here and there. And the whole idea of this white background really is about enhancing the depth and this infinite horizon, again, a term that Malevich really brought forward. And it also helps to invoke movement, as well as stability, if you don't want movement to come through and you want a more stable composition within the three-dimensional space. For me, it's also quite interesting experimenting with unity and discord. So as I've mentioned previously, sometimes a little bit of discord or imbalance that comes through can help invoke movement. So I do like it when some of these really start to, really start to show some movement in this two-dimensional static space. Occasionally, not very often, but I do like to leave little photographic Easter eggs. So it may be something tiny like a, a small bolt or something like that. You know, where people sometimes don't understand that these are photographically derived, sometimes it makes them think, if they see something there, think, well, why, why is that there? In one of the images, there is a tiny, tiny little TV screen that occupies a very small square. There's actually a, a person's face within that TV screen, and you wouldn't know it unless you looked for it. Also, very, very importantly on this, it's about approaching zero point in photography, where maybe you question and say, well, is this photography or not? Has this been taken beyond that? For me, if you do question, is it photography, then that is success. And again, what I said right at the beginning, that Malevich was looking at zero point within art, and I'm looking at the same thing within photography and you've got this transitional line and it's a case of whether you feel I'm in front of it, on it, or over it. And I think every individual person would have their own view on that. And finally, really for me, is the beauty of these compositions when it comes to the raw elements of composition. So that beauty of color, shape, tone, textures, and line. And it may well be that it's not always all of those, and it may be that we're talking opposite. So where I do sometimes like texture, other times I may not want the texture, so I, I may actually overexpose an area so that the whites bleed into the white background. Most people want to know the process, so let me show you a quick overview of this and you'll see how these things come about. So here we've got a donor image. It's a strange spiral staircase in some council flats in London that someone showed me and said, I really love this, and they were quite right. And we've got some amazing geometric forms in here, as well as those wonderful reds, um, with slightly different tones of reds and some interesting greys. So this is the original donor image. Quite often I will turn the camera just at an angle to get some triangles coming into play as well. Now from the donor image, I then look at abstraction. So this is where I cut out all of the existing geometry. And I'm not sure at this stage what I'm gonna use, but I certainly cut out all the things that are of interest for me. And you can see that we can get additional pieces of geometry through things like fences and railings, things like that. So it's, it's looking beyond the picture really and seeing what other pieces are available when you take the picture. Some of these abstractions can be really quite intense. So this one is over 60 layers. At other times they can be quite simple. So there's a couple of my favorites where they were only two or three layers. And in some ways that can sometimes be harder. The more simpler are the elements and the less of them. And it's a case of trying to bring them together. And yeah, it's not something that's just thrown together over a, you know, a couple of minutes or something like that. 
From abstraction, I then go into the destruction phase, which is where I actually add around about 50% more white space around the original abstraction. And then I spread it all out and pull it away from everything. And what I'm trying to do is just to destroy the original image because because once cut out you can still really see some of that original image coming through and I don't want to have that in mind when I start producing the new composition so this just helps me kind of like pull away from it all and then I've got the basic elements that I've abstracted and it's a case of then saying what I'm going to do with these to produce a, a supremacist composition now this is the closest I can get really to the original artists that work in suprematism because you might as well say, well, photographically you've already got all of the pieces and that you've not painted them from nothing. In photography you can't really produce anything from nothing. What I have to do is photograph these elements and then they will become the building blocks for my composition. And really the creation from within is the assembly of all these building blocks into a final suprematist styled photographic composition. And generally this is the final result. So it takes a lot of versions and I, I, I start putting things together and work on them, continually spinning elements around, sometimes multiple elements, and also spinning the whole thing around through 360 degrees, trying to get a feel for balance, for harmony, for unity, and seeing how everything works. Also, some feelings of depth coming through. And at times I will just kind of like work an hour or two and then leave it and sometimes I might just leave it for a few hours sometimes I'll leave it for a couple of days come back feel a bit more refreshed and start again usually when I get to that sort of point um, I'm looking at saving the original as a version whatever and then start again from where I left off and then if I stop again I'll then save that as yet another version so I've at least got some history in case things don't work out how I want them to go. I'm never really sure where it ends up. It is something that just comes from within me. I wish I could say here's how to do it but uh, I think really at the back of my mind what's always there is a lot of the work I've seen from not just Malevich but of a lot of the suprematist artists from that period and getting that sort of feel coming through in the final composition whether it's simple or very very complex. A very quick look at another one this was shot in a shop window in Oxford Street in London I saw this display box and loved the yellow. There's a couple of tiny elements as well in the lower half there. There's a, a bluey gray kind of like mastic and a black line. I was just thinking something more simpler. So from this, I won't take you through the whole process, but show you the final result. This was the final image, three elements that came together, which I really quite enjoyed. How does my work relate to Malevich's dynamic suprematism? Well, if you actually go onto Google and do a suprematist photography search, you will see some of my pictures coming up here, such as those you know, arrowed in red. Amongst those, you will see some of Malevich's work. I hope you tend to agree that when you look at my work in this way, they do kind of like work alongside the actual original paintings of Malevich, as well as some of the other suprematist artists of the time. I'm going to end with a little bit of fun here now. So Malevich was very, very famous for his piece or pieces called Black Square. And as with all abstract art, really, there are many, many people that don't quite understand all of this work. And then when you start to look at something like Black Square, um, trying to get to grips and underneath that as well is, is quite hard for people. There are about three stories to this, but I'm not going to elaborate on those at the moment. I've got my own views. But if you don't really understand Black Square and abstract art, or even think that something as simple as a Black Square is nonsense, then let me tell you, my view is that Malevich was well, well ahead of his time. To the point now, in, in kind of like the early 21st century, most of our homes welcome a, a black square, or should we say a black rectangle, on the walls of most of our homes now. And one, we tend to go out to shops and even want to choose the right black rectangle for our home. And then once we've purchased that, we're very, very happy to actually live with that on our wall or out to the side of a, 
a sitting room or a lounge, and even if you don't want to call it art, let's just say it's a piece of black geometry. Yet, when I see these flat screen TVs, it does take me straight back to Malevich's black square and really how advanced he was for his time. That's it, a brief introduction to my work. I really hope you've enjoyed that. There is so much more to it and so much more really to the origins of suprematism than I can go into here. I do offer this as a two hour talk for camera clubs. So if you're interested in that, uh, do get in touch. I can do that live locally. I do travel overnight for some places. And obviously I can do something like this on Zoom as well. Many thanks.